Hello and welcome to this demonstration of an integration between Spring Surf and OpenCMIS. Spring Surf is a Spring extension project hosted at Spring Source. It provides a lightweight development approach to building web applications. OpenCMIS is a Java client library that allows you to connect to any CMIS compliant content repository. By combining both of these we create a development platform for CMIS enabled web applications. In this video, I will demonstrate a simple web application called the CMIS browser and then walk through the code that implements it. The Spring Surf and Open CMIS integration is a work in progress. If you wish to provide feedback or contribute in any way, you can contact me via the details in this video. The CMIS browser is a simple application that allows you to connect to any CMIS repository. Once connected, you can navigate through the repository's folder hierarchy and for each folder you can view its properties as well as see the documents that reside within it. For each document you can also see its properties and also view its content. The CMIS browser is made up of several UI components. Each component is a Spring Surf web script. Spring Surf web scripts are developed using scripting technologies such as JavaScript and FreeMarker. Each of the components communicate with the CMIS repository via the Open CMIS client library either through the Atom Pub or web service bindings of CMIS. Let's see the CMIS browser in action. First thing you'll notice is that it asks me to log in via HTTP authentication. In this case we are connecting to the hosted Alfresco CMIS repository at cmis.alfresco.com once connected, you can see information about the repository. In this case, the vendor is Alfresco, and the CMIS specification that's supported is version 1.0. We can drill down through the root folder to see its contents. As you can see, there are plenty of folders and documents in this repository. For each item, we can see who last modified it and when it was last modified. And for documents, we can also see the length of the content. Let's browse down into a folder. This looks like a folder created by Jeff Potts via his Python CMIS library. We can view the content there. Go back up, find another document to view. As you can see, this is a very simple web application. So let's now focus on how this was built. I'm now in Eclipse where I have two open projects. The first project represents the web application and the second project represents the reusable set of UI components that the web application relies on. This web application is a Spring Surf application. It was generated using Spring Surf scaffolding capability uh, via Spring Roo. As you can see, it's generated for me several pieces of configuration. The first one here uh, sets up Spring Surf for my web application. I've made one change here, which is to register an authenticator, which uh, communicates with a CMIS backend repository for authentication purposes. The other config here is specific to CMIS web applications. It allows you to specify CMIS servers that the application can connect to. Each server is given a name, and you can also specify the parameters uh, which are used to connect to the CMIS repository. These parameters are actually those that are specified by OpenCMIS. In this case, we're going to connect via the Atom Pub binding, and this is the URL that we're going to connect to, which happens to be the Alfresco hosted repository. For the web application, that is pretty much the code, and that's because we are going to rely on the components that are in this other project here. Let's look at those components. The first component is the repository info component and we're looking at the web script descriptor. This descriptor just specifies that the repo info component will be bound to the slash repo URL and that you have to be logged in in order to access this component. The controller for, co for the component is implemented via JavaScript in this case, all we're doing is accessing the OpenCMIS connection from the web application session. 
the authenticator that we saw registered earlier places the connection into the session when you log in. From the connection we can get hold of the repository info and the root folder and place those objects into the web script model for subsequent rendering. We have a HTML template that takes the repository info object and examines each of the properties and outputs them into the HTML. For the root folder we also render a URL in this case slash folder slash the folder ID and we use the name of the folder for the URL display name. Let's take a look at the folder web script. This web script maps to slash folder slash object ID the same URL that we just rendered in our repository info web script. The object ID is a token which allows us to parameterize this URL. Let's take a look at the controller. Again, it's very simple. All it does is take out the OpenCMIS connection from the web application session. And then we use the OpenCMIS method called getObject, which is given an object ID which we passed in on the URL. And it returns a uh, CMIS object, which in this case is the folder. From the folder we can get its parent and we can also get its children, which we place into the web script model. The folder HTML template examines those model objects. For example, it looks to see whether the parent exists and if it does, renders a folder URL that allows us to go back up. And then for each of the folder children, it checks to see whether the child is a folder. If it is, it renders properties such as the last modified by and modification date. It also renders a folder URL for the child folder so that we can drill further down. If it's a document, we render properties such as last modified by, content stream length, and last modification date. To view the content of the document, we render this URL slash content slash the ID of the document. The final web script is the content viewer web script. It's mapped to that content URL that we just generated in our folder browser. As you can see, it also has an object ID specified as a token for parameterization of the URL. Instead of using JavaScript and FreeMarker, we implement this web script in Java. And the reason we do that is so that we can take the content stream and push it out to the HTTP response. The implementation is similar to the other web scripts. We use the getObject uh, method of OpenCMIS in order to gain access to the document given the object ID. Once we have the document, we can then get the content stream. And once we have the content stream, we can set the MIME type on the response and push the input stream to the output stream of the response. And that's all of the code for the CMIS browser. If you wanted to, you could also create JSON templates if you wanted to interact with a client JSON library that resides in the browser. You could also write Groovy controller scripts instead of JavaScript. Let's just go back to our CMIS server configuration file. I'm just going to switch out the Fresco repository and switch in the XOXCMIS hosted repository. I'm now just going to restart my web application. to log in again now, pass in the EXO credentials. We can see we've got the same components, but this time we're browsing a different repository from a different vendor. So I can browse down into folders and view documents as I did before. Okay, what's next for this integration? Well, we're going to allow manual control of open CMIS connections so that an application can have multiple connections open at once. We will provide new UI components such as a property inspector and query executor and we'll look at providing the API in Spring Surf pages. Spring Surf and Open CMIS are open source projects that are both Apache licensed. The Alfresco CMIS repository is available at cmis.alfresco.com and is LGPL. If you've got any feedback or wish to contribute, then you can contact me via the details listed here. Thank you for watching.